All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the developer hours. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about uh, the WordPress playground. Um, we have uh, Adam, and I, I'm sorry, I should have got your how to pronounce your last name bef before we started. Is it Zelensky? <laughs> yeah, Adam Zielinski. Okay. So nice to, to meet you all. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh, so if you want to be on video, you can. Um, and this will be recorded and put on WordPress TV. Um, I do ask that everybody remain muted, muted during the presentation. We will have a, a Q&A portion at the end. Um, so I'll invite you to turn on your mics then. In the uh, chat notes, I will be uh, linking to a couple of uh, projects. Uh, well, well this, this specific project and its documentation. Uh, for now, um, Adam, can you just give us a bit of your background and your involvement with uh, WP, WP Playground? Absolutely. So WordPress Playground is a project I started last year in an attempt to be able to teach WordPress on a website. So every single course starts with a setup that takes maybe some hours, maybe some days, uh, if you're less familiar with WordPress. And I just wanted to be able to write a course. I couldn't do that. I needed a full WordPress a with REST API, all that on a server. That would be insanely difficult to make it available for like, give every single student a separate WordPress. So then I thought, what if you could do it in a browser? And turns out that was possible and that evolved into WordPress Playground. I'm uh, a software developer working with Automatic for the last five years, for the last two years with WordPress. I'm a WordPress core committer also. And WordPress Playground is kind of my dream of solving WordPress setup issue slash accessibility issue awesome uh thanks uh thanks for that information adam um before we begin the pr presentation uh i just i have a few announcements uh wordpress 6.3 is in, in in development at this point uh so uh i look forward to everybody you know hopping over to track or github and you know taking a few tickets and getting involved in however you can um WordCamp WordCamp Europe is from June 8th through the 10th. Uh WordCamp US is uh August 24th through the 26th. That's a little bit earlier than uh than it's been in previous years. So keep an eye out for tickets. Um and uh there's more local work camps being scheduled. Uh I'll share the uh link to Central WordPress uh and these other things in the chat room. So that's just a bit of house cleaning. Uh, and uh, we will we can get over to the presentation of uh, WordPress Playground now, Adam. I'll just turn it over to you. Awesome. Perfect. I'm going to share my screen now and start the presentation. So just a little bit of a setup. All right. So... WordPress Playground. And I just, uh, just to confirm, uh, are my slides visible on a screenshot right now? Yes, I can see them fine. Perfect. So WordPress Playground. This WordPress is running in my browser and it uses only JavaScript. So there is no MySQL and there is no PHP and there is no server at all. In fact, this is just JavaScript. So it's called WordPress Playground, and I'm about to tell you what you can do with it, how does it work, and how to start using it pretty much today. You can build something with it right after this presentation. So the primary problem itself is that WordPress is difficult. And I don't even mean building a website with WordPress, but just starting your journey with WordPress. So if I'm a user and I want to start using WordPress, someone told me WordPress is really cool, you should check it out. I'm going to type WordPress in Google, and then I find out this installation page that, that tells me to install a lot of stuff that I'm not familiar with. I have no idea um, where to even start installing something like Apache or MySQL. So 
maybe I'm going to look into something else. Like alternatively, I, I could pay a hosting company, but I don't want to do that just to check what WordPress is. And if I'm a developer, well, I want to learn WordPress, but every single course starts with a setup like this. So I have to go and install a bunch of stuff and set up a local environment and something like Next.js maybe has a live tutorial on the website or um, yeah, so maybe I'll go and check that instead. Or if I'm on a, in a product team and my friend, uh, my colleague sent me a pull request to test, well, I don't have a local testing environment and I don't have a staging server, so I'm kind of stuck. I'm not sure how to proceed with this. Or if my company builds a WordPress plugin and I just want to be able to show it to my potential customers, well, I cannot do that easily. I have to use videos and screenshots because I cannot give any, everyone their own WordPress. That would be pretty expensive. And if I give uh, everyone the same WordPress and WordPress admin access, people will change that content. Like That's not something I, I want. So when it comes to WordPress, it is quite hard to install it as a new user. It's hard to start learning it, then test changes and then distribute code. So what's exactly easy about getting started with it. Like this is a pretty exhaustive list of things I want to do as a newcomer. And there are some existing tools to make that easier, like there's local and WPNF, and they help me with, with installation and testing, but I'm not going to embed a local on my online site, on my homepage, or I'm not going to be able to use it in my course as a live thing. And then I need to download things and I need to install them, which means I need a desktop device in the first place. What if I only have a phone? So WordPress Playground is a way of solving all these problems with a single click of a mouse. So installing WordPress, well, click and it's done. Like this right here is the actual demo on developer.wordpress.org. And all these links and notes are going to be shared in a Zoom chat, by the way. So I can go there. I just chose a theme, a few plugins, and it's already live. This is my own WordPress running in my own browser. It's an actual WordPress installation, right? It's not a uh, link that, uh, uh, it's not the same WordPress that everyone else is using. This is my own WordPress installation. If I want to learn how to code with WordPress, well, it can look like this. So this is an article that I have published on my blog. It uses part of WordPress Playground called PHP WebAssembly. I'll be talking about it later on. So this is an article teaching a new API in WordPress 6.2. It allows you to manipulate HTML. Uh, anyway, like there is a code snippet right in this article and I can change it. Like So I can run it, it's going to execute and then I can change part of it. So I can say, hello WordCamp. And if I run it, well, it's going to rerun right in my browser. I don't have to install PHP. I don't have to install any development environment. I just visited an article. I clicked it. It worked. Furthermore, if I'm only a prospective developer and I'm thinking about maybe switching careers and I'm learning programming right now, well, I can do it on a phone or on a tablet. Maybe I have a break. Uh, I'm right now, or I'm, at, I'm on a train, I have some time, I don't have a full on laptop, but I have a tablet. Well, sure, this thing works. I can use it on mobile devices. There's no need to install anything at all. And once I'm ready to develop with WordPress locally, uh, I don't have to install the PHP server and my MySQL and all of that. I can just go to my Visual Studio code, install WordPress Playground plugin, and it's going to give me a WordPress development environment. So I can start modifying WordPress if I want to, if I want to just write a simple plugin like, uh, all right, I don't have that slide. If I want to just write a single plug, uh, simple plugin, I can do that, I can develop themes. I only have to click a button, install uh, the extension and in the sidebar, I'm going to have a start WordPress server button that will do everything for me. So getting started, super easy. Then if I want to test code changes, click and it's done with WordPress Playground. Like this time when we have a pull request, there is a link in here that uh, goes to playground.wordpress.net, which is the official demo site. And let's take a look what happens when I click it. So it this one adds a secret message to WP admin. And if I go to that link, well, my pull request is already applied there. And I don't have a staging environment. I don't have a server. Well, let's test it on PHP 8. 
oh, there's an error here. Well, good thing it was easy to test, right? I only clicked a button and used a different PHP version. So WordPress Playground can also do that. Finally, if I want to showcase my plugin on a homepage, make it very easy for people to use, well, instead of using videos, I can just put WordPress in there. So this is a WooCommerce store. I can open a product. I can add it to my cart. I can view my cart, go to checkout like it's an actual WooCommerce store live in my browser. I don't have to... Oh, and this is how it's implemented, by the way. The live demo takes about 24 lines of code for the developers here. So this is not hard at all, right? WordPress Playground makes these things very accessible. So I'm going to tell you in details how, um, how to get started with building these apps. But first, let's take a look under the hood and see how exactly WordPress Playground works, like what makes WordPress usable inside JavaScript. So uh, WordPress, uh, <laughs> I have a Polish word here. WordPress Playground consists of two parts. There is a PHP that's working in the browser and there's WordPress that's working without a server. So PHP working in the browser is enabled by a new technology known as WebAssembly. WebAssembly is just a way of building mm, the software that we know from regular computers and desktops and servers into JavaScript or a format that JavaScript can understand. So in this particular example, PHP interpreter, like PHP is a programming language, that's a also a program, and that program is created in a C programming language. So this is how a simple C program looks like. This just prints hello world on my screen. So classically, if I wanted to use that on my desktop, I would need something called a compiler that would create a file, and then I could execute that file. So maybe on Windows, that file would be called hello.exe. Maybe on a Linux, it would be hello.out, but I can run it. And when I run it, it prints hello world on my screen. So it turns out, if I want to do the same thing for WebAssembly, to be able to run this in a browser, I can also do that. I just need a different compiler that can build it to WebAssembly and JavaScript. So that compiler is called mscripten. And when I run it, I'll also get executable files, <clears throat> a WebAssembly file and a JavaScript file. And then I can execute them anywhere I have JavaScript. So I can do it in Node.js, I can do it in a browser, and it's going to print hello world all the same. So now I can take a regular program and make it into a JavaScript program. So back to PHP interpreter. This is a C program in itself. And this means I can take a PHP source code and use mscripten to create a WebAssembly program out of it. So then I can take that and execute PHP code in a browser. So I know there's a lot of concepts here. There's a C programs, PHP programs, executing things like the most important takeaway is that I can take PHP, the programming language, and I can put it in a browser and then I can run PHP code. Oh, and PHP has plenty of versions and WordPress Playground supports many of them. So this looks more like this, right? We have a set of files for every single PHP version. So switching versions, as we've just seen in the demo when I was testing that pull request, that's actually pretty boring technically because I only tell the browser to download a different WebAssembly file. Like it's just static files. So then we also have WordPress without a server. That was PHP. And this one gets even more interesting. So normally... When you want to run WordPress, you need to download WordPress, install it, and then open it in your browser and start navigating. So downloading WordPress, that's a solved problem. You go to WordPress.org, you click download, you have a zip bundle, and the browser can do the same. There is a fetch uh, API, you can use it, you can download zip files, that's fine. However, installing WordPress is a bit more interesting. So classically, to install WordPress, we need a MySQL server, right? A database server. And then during the installation process, WordPress will ask us, what's your database host, username, password, all these details. Only problem is in the browser, we don't have MySQL. So how do we exactly install WordPress Playground? Well, WordPress needs to store its data somewhere. And instead of MySQL, we use a database, a database called SQLite. There is a SQL uh, translation layer in between WordPress and SQLite. And by the way, that's an official plugin. Mm, you can download it, use it in any WordPress um, project you have. But in WordPress Playground, we pre-install it and we use it so that WordPress thinks it talks to MySQL, but the translation layer actually 
takes any database query, rewrites it in a different format, sends it over to SQLite, gets the results, and translates them back for WordPress. So WordPress thinks it has MySQL that it needs. It's a hard dependency, but actually we made it work with a different database. So that's the installation, but we still need to be able to open WordPress in a browser and navigate it. So to do that, we need to solve a problem. Classic WordPress works in this way. We have a web browser, we have a server somewhere in the internet with PHP and WordPress. So our web browser tells it, I want the homepage of your site and the server renders it, sends it back. You know, that all that happens when we type the address in the browser, right? Like mywebsite.com. However, in case of WordPress Playground, well, there is no server anywhere remotely. So we cannot ask that server through the internet. So instead, we take that server and we put it inside the web browser. So web browser now has two functions. First, it is a device to browse to, to browse WordPress, to navigate through the pages, log in to admin, create uh, posts. But it is also, it also plays a vital second role and acts as a WordPress server. So the only remaining problem is how to force that browser to use that server when you type something into your browser address bar. And to do that, WordPress Playground uses something called Service Worker, which is a, well, kind of like traffic controller for your network traffic. So it stands between the web browser and the internet. And it says, well, this part of the traffic goes to the internet, but this other part I want to handle, handle it on my own. So what we do is we redirect every single web request that would normally go to the server back to the browser to WordPress server that runs on our device. So that's it. We have a downloaded WordPress. We've installed it with a SQLite as a database. And now we can also navigate it. So what to make out of all of it? Well, let's see how WordPress Playground can be used to build things. So there are four ways, four primary ways to use WordPress Playground. The first one is very simple. It requires no coding at all. And then there are progressively more powerful, but also more difficult APIs you can use. So let's take a look at the no code way. To use Playground without code, <clears throat> you can go to playground.wordpress.net and you immediately get your very own private WordPress instance. And by the way, everything you do there stays in your web browser. The data is not sent anywhere. It's not shared with any external service. So you can import your website there. You can try any risky changes like switching a theme or updating homepage content or installing like 20 different plugins if you want to. It's completely safe. And if you want to start over, you just refresh the page in your browser, you get completely new WordPress. So without a code, you can also do a couple of uh, other things that I'm going to show you in uh, just about a minute. You can build a theme or an entire site and you can save it. And once you save it, you can import the changes to your own website or you can host it anywhere you want. You can try a plugin or 20 plugins or a theme. And you can also test your code. If you happen to be a plugin developer, you can test your plugin on multiple PHP and WordPress versions. Then the next way to use WordPress Playground is through something called a query API. And query API is a way to take WordPress Playground and embed it in your application using an iframe. So this code snippet right here looks like the preview at the bottom. So we put an iframe on our site, we point it to playground.wordpress.net, and we add a little something to the address. In this case, we say theme equals pendant. And this tells WordPress Playground that we want to use the pendant theme from the theme WordPress theme directory. So it's going to download it for us and install it and activate it. And that entire process is automated. So there is more to it than just customizing themes. You can also tell it to pre-install a plugin or multiple plugins. You can tell it to visit a very specific page once it loads or to use a specific PHP or WordPress version. 
that's just by appending things to the URL. And in fact, the uh, demo on developer.wordpress.org, the one that was on the very, uh, very second slide on this presentation, uh, the one where we were selecting themes and plugins, it is actually built on top of the query API. So whenever I select a theme and a set of plugins, all it does is it prepares this query string that says, oh, plugin Coblox and plugin BBPress and theme Skatepark. And it uses that to load WordPress Playground. And inside that iframe, all this work happens. So these things are downloaded, installed, activated, and then I get to enjoy a site where all of it uh, already works. So in short, like that demo, it is <clears throat> very simple, right? Like all the work happens inside WordPress Playground. The only thing that demo has to do is to come up with the correct address to load it. Another way to use WordPress Playground, the one that's quite a bit more powerful, is so-called blueprints. So blueprints are JSON files that describe all the steps necessary to set up a specific Playground instance that I want to have. So uh, with blueprints, you can do everything you can do with Query API and more. So we can run PHP code during the setup, like this blueprint on the screen right now is going to create a post in my WordPress. You can tell it to login. You can create any PHP uh, or any other file you want. You can install plugins, not just from WordPress plugin directory, but any plugins at all. And you can do even more than that. Uh, there are some use cases described in the documentation. And again, like one of the links on the chat will point to a resource page where that's mentioned. And you can, you have a ton of control over Playground instance. And this API is also quite approachable. You don't have to understand JavaScript. You don't have to know how to code. Like if you know how to write code, this is perfect. It will help you run like pre-configure your site with, Java, uh, with PHP, but you don't have to know that. You can write JSON and declare what you need. And this API can also be tried out pretty quickly. So the uh, documentation has some live examples using blueprints that you can just click try out and it will run them. And then you can customize that code and see what happens. And the way to use blueprints technically, you also don't need to install any node packages on, or you don't even need to create a, a HTML page or a JavaScript file. You can literally write a blueprint and then paste it in the URL bar. I will show that in a couple of minutes. So with blueprints, excuse me. With blueprints, uh, there was one cool thing was built with blueprints. So this on the screen right now, this is called Translations Playground. And it is a website. And if you go to it, it will download translation files for WordPress. It will install GlotPress plugin. It will install a plugin of your choice. It will activate it all and set it all up in just the correct way. And then it will allow you to start translating WordPress right in your browser. So we don't need any setup at all. You can just visit a link and it's all there. And once you're done, there is a button to propose these translations for like official WordPress translations catalog. I'm not sure that's the proper name. And this even has integration with ChatGPT. So you can literally use ChatGPT to translate WordPress in your browser with no setup at all. So this was built using WordPress Playground by uh, Alex Kirk. And there's a URL and it will be also mentioned again in the resources section. So finally, the last way to use WordPress Playground is uh, JavaScript API. And this is available through an NPM package. So you have to have a developer environment and you have to install it or reference it through unpackage URL. And this one has the highest barrier of entry, but it also gives you the most control. So this on the slide right now, we start a playground connection. Uh, we give it an iframe, it loads in, in there, create a file, we run that file, we can issue requests to WordPress, we can do anything at all we want, like download anything from, uh, from any URL, we can install like 50 different plugins and some of them are private and we can 
put like 10 themes in there and we can put like a tile layout of 10 playgrounds, each with a different version of WordPress and PHP if you want to install it, if you want to test your things like very efficiently. All these things can be done with the JavaScript API. The downside is, is that you have to know JavaScript and install it and then like probably read more a little bit more carefully through that uh, documentation. So it is an excellent way to use it. And in fact, like Blueprints API and Query API are both built with that. But there are also other APIs that you can use to uh, make it simple. Like in fact, uh, the translations playground that I showed, like Blueprints are so powerful that this app was built with Blueprints. So this is uh, the last slide that I'm going to show, but I also have mm, a short video to share of what you can do specifically with uh, less code or sometimes no code at all. So where is my mouse cursor though? Oh, right, there we go. So with WordPress Playground, you can create, uh, this is WP admin. It's play, playground that we've all just seen. So we can install plugins in there. And one way to do it is, you know, like if you want to install a Gutenberg plugin and a create lock theme plugin and a skate park theme, we can literally download them and go to plugins in WP admin add new and start. So first thing we're going to see there's a little error and that's because as I mentioned, WordPress Playground is private. It doesn't send any data anywhere. So it cannot communicate with plugin directory. Like that's that's one downside of this. So we want to be able to see it at least from directory, but we can upload them. And I'm just going to click on this upload button and upload zip files in there. So, uh, there's one and we're going to install it and activate that. And we're going to go through this process with the other plugin and with a theme. And it is a little bit painful and it is a little bit tedious to do this, to do this every single time. So we're about to find out what other way there is to do that. And we've already seen it today. So here goes a theme, we install, we activate it and it turns out like this WordPress already has these things once we did it. So here's a skate park theme and we, uh, in WordPress admin, we can see there's a Gutenberg position in the menu. We can go there. Yeah, there's the Gutenberg editor demo. So that took a little bit of time. We could do it, which is great, but here's a more automated way. So instead of uploading everything manually, I'm going to start over. So I refresh the page. I have a completely new playground. So right now in the URL, I'm going to use the query API. So I'm going to say theme equals skate park and plugin Did I just drop out? Yes, you, uh, I was just uh, about to st uh, start chatting about something completely different, but uh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> All you're right, good to go. Let me let me share my screen again. Sorry about that. So, uh, once again, uh, I need to re rewind this a little bit. Sorry about that. So I'm going to install plugins in an automated way right now. And to do that, I'm going to type theme equals skatepark and plugin equals Gutenberg and plugin equals create block theme. And th when I press enter, like that's all I need to do to tell Playground, hey, like handle that for me. I don't want to download things, upload them, activate, like just do it, figure it this out. And that's exactly what's happening here. This is the exact same website as we've set up manually. 
only took like 10 times less. And these plugins are here. Gutenberg demo is active and I can just start doing whatever I wanted to, to do with this playground instance. So this is probably one of the most easiest way to start building things with playground. Like now let's build a theme inside WordPress playground. So we still have our plugins. There's a Gutenberg create block theme and skate park. So I go to site editor and I'm going to in site editor start customizing this site for a little bit. So I'll change the background. I'll make it blue. Let's make it blue. And I'll make a bunch of other changes. And to save you 10 minutes, I sped it up. So maybe different fonts, uh, line heights, all this. So now I'm done. And I can go in options to create book theme. And in the sidebar, if I scroll a little bit, there's an export button that I can press and download this entire theme that I just built as a zip file. So this has all the files needed to import that theme in a new WordPress. So if you go to playground to the WordPress net, again, like this is a new instance, fresh one. We go to appearance themes. We only have one theme right now, but I'm going to upload that file that we just downloaded. And when I do that and I install it and I activate that theme, well, we, have all our customizations in place, right? So I just built an entire theme in Playground. I started by forking an existing theme, made a bunch of changes, downloaded it, and now it's good to go. And any WordPress out there can install it and use it. So that didn't require any setup at all. So this site is a bit empty and I'm going to import some content to it. And WordPress allows you to export your content and import it. So I'll go to tools and import. And I prepared a file earlier on that I can now upload in the importer. So I'm going to select it, it's an XML file. It has a testing content for themes. And I'll also have to select the author for all the posts. So once I submit it, first thing we're going to see is a bunch of errors. And that is because these files are remote, right? So WordPress Playground will not go to the internet and will not download these media files. That's a thing that may be there one day, but other than that, all my content is in place. So I can go through pages. They have a bunch of content. I can test my themes with a different layouts and headings and all that. So let's go a step further and build that entire site in Playground. So this is the documentation site for WordPress Playground. Let's recreate that in our new theme using our colors and fonts and global styles. So I'm going to, copy that content, find a pattern that seems the most useful. So this is a two column pattern. And I'll just paste this content here and do a bunch of uh, other wrangling. So again, let's speed it up. I'll put a video here, like some colors, adjust the menu. And after a couple of minutes, I'm going to have a website that has that uh, documentation homepage in it, right? So WordPress Playground, there's a description, there's a video, there are buttons. So that looks pretty good. Oh, and notice this is a preview in a new tab. So I want to save it because I wouldn't like to lose it, right? When I refresh WordPress Playground page, that will be lost. So let's save all of that. So there's a little button in here that I can click, and this is an export button. What it does is it downloads the entire site I have in WordPress Playground. And by entire site, I mean, well, let's open this. So all WordPress core files are in that zip. Did I just stop that video? I may have. Oh no, it's playing, it's just a very long pause. So I can unzip that file and all WordPress core files are going to be in there. And that's unsettlingly long. Well, something's wrong with my quick turn. Let me, huh. technical issues, all right. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm sorry for that, please give me a second.
Well, all right. I'm not going to be able to finish that video, so it seems. Uh, apologize for that, but I'll use uh, I'll paint the picture with with my words, hopefully. So if I uh, take this file and I unzip it, it's going to have the entire WordPress website, uh, all WordPress core files like WP content and WP includes and uh, WP admin in it. There will be all plugins that I installed in there, all themes, and even the entire database as a SQL uh, light file is included inside. This means I can take this zip file and I can host that website on any web host out there and it will work. And I can also uh, take what I just built and I can transplant parts of it to my running site somewhere else. And then once uh, I want, let's say I want to share that with someone. Well, I can go to Slack and I can drop that file in there and another person can take my WordPress playground zip with my site that I just built, open a playground themselves, and they can just import it in there. There's another button in WordPress Playground UI right, right next to the one I used to download this. It's for importing, and it accepts this exact type of files. So I can go to WordPress Playground. I can build a site. I can download it. It has, has everything in it. I can share it with other people. And then uh, I can also you know, pause, pause working on it, resume later, re-import it to some more changes this kind of workflow. So one last thing that I had on, on a video uh, that I'm going to stop right now was testing Playground with specific PHP and WordPress versions. And I already gave a glimpse on, of that before uh, on the slides. So if I wanted to try my new site with uh, WordPress, let's say 5.9 and PHP 5.6, I could, uh, I could do that by importing it, like setting the correct version. And then I would see, oh, it looks right on 6.2 and 6.1 WordPress versions, but then on 6.0 that I also really wanted to support, well, there's a visual glitch. And maybe on 5.9, it, it cannot be imported at all. Like there's an error. So that's a very useful thing to learn from your own testing. You don't want to build something and then have people tell you, uh, there was an error in it. So once you do all that and you want to build yet another site, you can do that by simply refreshing the browser tab. So one last thing I'm going to share visually is the documentation page. And again, like the, the uh, chat has a link or will have a link. I'll make that a little bit bigger. So this is wordpress.githubio slash wordpress playground. And in here, uh, you know, I can click try it now that the demo I showed before, I can get started. And in this section, there are all the APIs that we discussed, query API, JSON blueprints, JavaScript APIs, they all have reference here. Uh, they all have examples, there are tutorials. You can uh, start using WordPress Playground in five minutes and it covers trying out blocks, themes, plugins, saving your site, all these things. And there are even, uh, if I go to get started with blueprints and I go to paste blueprint fragment, well, the way to use blueprints, uh, as I said, you can just paste them in the URL. Like I write some JSON and then I go to playgroundwordpress.net slash, I put this little hash sign here and then I just paste what I wrote, right? No development environment required at all. So one cool thing about uh, blueprints too is that a bunch of them have live examples in the docs. So if I click try it out, it will start WordPress Playground instance with this. So right now I can only click it and play with it and see like WordPress 5.9, this is the same version. So right now I can only try this example. In the nearest future, this will be interactive. So we'll be able to also play with it right here. And that's all I wanted to, to share during this presentation. Uh, I think we can open it up for questions. All right, Th uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, that was really great. Uh, I'm already thinking of ideas that I wanna use it myself. Um, but yes, I do wanna open up the uh, question and answer portion of this uh, session to everyone. Um, I don't know that we have the Q&A enabled on this meeting. Uh, but you can ask directly in the chat or you can 
you know, turn off your mic and uh, just ask us any questions you want. <clears throat> Is it possible to export and import uh, playground files to GitHub? Sure. So there isn't a button that will do that for you, but you can absolutely download your entire site or export parts of it. And then you can put these files on GitHub yourself. Uh, what would be like, what are you thinking of? Like what, what use case? Because that sounds interesting. Everything in code. Uh, I'm using Word, WordPress engine, uh, patent manager, and I just, uh, made some patterns and those are written to my theme and i just want to make a little uh commit and push oh uh gotcha so let me let, let me see if i uh if i understood uh you correctly so you're working with uh patterns and you would like to modify a pattern and then just push your changes to github is that right that's right exactly uh given the wordpress engine um, patent manager plugin automatically right. writes uh, patents to the theme. So that's taken care of. Um, where is that? <laughs> where is the code? All right. <laughs> so I don't know much about WP Engine plug, uh, pattern manager, but it writes that to a theme, if that's a local file, like a PHP file, then one of the things I showed on the presentation was the Visual Studio Code extension for WordPress Playground. So this is not in, in the browser, but if you have Visual Studio Code and you run WordPress Playground there, like it will set up entire WordPress for you, you'll be able to work with your patterns, preview them, all that, and then commit these local files. If you are looking for in a browser workflow, then I guess you would have to, like at the moment, you would probably have to download the entire site and work uh, work your way from, from there. But that is an interesting, Use case. So one of the things uh, we want to do in the future with WordPress Playground is have an entire development environment in one way or another. So there would be a code editor, there would be a terminal emulator, you would be able to use WPCLI, and perhaps there would be even Git integration, right? So then your workflow would look like this. You would go to a website, you would do your magic, and then right there, you would have everything you need to push that to Git. So it's not so integrated today, but it will be possible in the future. Okay, that's a fantastic answer. And um, another example very similar would be using the create block theme uh, plugin where you overwrite, you know, with your customizations, you've done some customizations as you showed during your presentation in the site editor. And I, I just wanna get that in code. So I use the create block theme plugin to get that code overwrite using the overwrite option of that plugin. And it does the same thing. It writes to, to the code. Uh, if I did that while I was in the playground, where would the code go? So playground, uh, if you use playground in the browser, it doesn't have access to your local disk yet that's a feature that's uh, coming so that will be really cool but for now all the files live in memory so like there's actually like a huge javascript object that pretends to be a file system and there are directories in it and entries that uh, represent files so whenever you write a file whenever you update a php file in there it actually updates an entry in that object and the export function the way it works is it it tells php to zip your entire WordPress directory using that file system, that JavaScript object, and then it downloads it. So the files live in JavaScript at the moment in the browser version. If you use the VS Code version, they live on your disk and these are your regular files. All right, uh, that's good. We have a question in the chat uh, from Kaiser. As every WordPress instance we are building in Playground, does it run inside of Docker? Oh, there's no Docker involved at all. That's the magic of WebAssembly. So WebAssembly uh, is this new technology that allows you to run regular programs that you only could run uh, on desktop computers before. It allows you to run them inside JavaScript. So everywhere you have JavaScript, like browsers, Node.js, Visual Studio Code, you can run 
let in this instance PHP. So PHP runs directly in the web browser. I know it seems like magic, but it's actually true. Like there's uh, that's you get that statement right. PHP runs in the browser. PHP runs inside JavaScript. So WordPress Playground runs WordPress PHP software through JavaScript thanks to WebAssembly. So there's no Docker involved at all. It's just your browser tab. And that's why the minute you close your browser tab, your WordPress is wiped and you can start from a clean slate. And that's also how you, it works on a mobile device, right? You cannot install Docker on an iPhone or on an Android tablet, well, but about Android tablet, I'm not sure. Maybe you could jailbreak, jailbreak it and, and work something out. But point is, Playground allows you to just open, you know, go to a link and that's it. <clears throat> the entire WordPress works there. No prerequisites, no Dockers, no Apache servers, no package managers. It just works. Uh, Did I answer your question? Uh, I hope so. Uh, from Kaiser, let us know if uh, you need it. Okay. Yeah, he said yes. All right. So next question from chat. Uh, I believe you've maybe already kind of answered this. So will uploaded media also be stored temporarily? Yes. Uh, there is no server behind all that. So yeah. it's not stored anywhere else. Like it's not in a cloud. It's not on someone else's computer. In fact, you could argue like it's not stored at all, right? It's just in a memory of your computer. So WordPress Playground has this upcoming feature that will allow, allow you to use it in a persistent mode, sort of. So like you'll be able to open a special window and it will save everything to local storage in your browser, and then you'll refresh it, and the, this very same WordPress that you uh, just left will show up again. Right now, it works only as long as you keep your browser tab open. So, yeah, it is temporary at the moment or ephemeral. All right, good. We got some more questions coming in. Uh, are we able to use WP Playground offline somehow, or create our own playground? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. So one of the, all right. So once I load WordPress in a browser tab, I have the entire PHP runtime downloaded. I have all WordPress PHP files downloaded and I can turn off my internet and I can go through WP admin and maybe sometimes I'll see a missing CSS file because like the static assets are on a server, but entire application, like the logic, it lives in my browser tab. So in fact, there was a CloudFest hackathon earlier this year where uh, I and uh, me and Daniel Backcuber, we had a project uh, called in-browser WordPress development environment. So what we did there was we used StackBlitz and in StackBlitz, we managed to run WordPress Playground because you can run JavaScript there. And then we opened that on an Android phone. We turned off the internet access and we created a tiny, tiny plugin and we could edit the plugin files offline on a phone. And then we could go in WP admin, like activate that plugin and our change was there. So yeah, you can absolutely use it online through a browser. Once you load it, eventually it will be a PWA. So you'll be able to open it, even like even load it without oh. internet access provided you loaded it at least once in the past. And the Visual Studio Code extension, that doesn't talk to the internet at all. It leaves completely on your local computer. So if you download it, you can turn off Wi-Fi and it will just host the WordPress development environment on your machine. Oh, great. Uh, we'll get a, a great question here uh, from Kaiser again. If a custom plugin tries to create custom tables in the database, uh, will Playground allow that? Or are we stuck with yeah. say, okay, yeah. It, it will allow that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, see oh, I, I mean, like, I, I thought Justin, you wanted to, to add something to that. Like, I, I want to expand on it. So oh, the, go ahead. not only go Playground ahead. will allow that, uh, we've been actually running WooCommerce on it, which creates a bunch of custom tables. And it also has more complex uh, SQL queries than vanilla WordPress. Like uh, it does something called select from dual, which is not uh, available in a, in, in a SQL light. It does complex joins and all these things actually worked. So 
I really like this question because the need to support custom tables and complex queries, it actually drove forward the SQLite integration plugin for WordPress. So this is a separate project living in its own repo. You can install it in any WordPress. And as uh, I was adding features to Playground and run, uh, I was running into roadblocks related to database databases, I kept contributing to that SQLite integration plugin. So a bunch of features were actually developed to be able to run more things in WordPress Playground. So this includes custom tables, custom SQL queries. I don't, you cannot run procedures yet, uh, maybe one day, but you can do a whole lot of interesting things, even though this is SQLite and has fundamentally different set of features than core, Word, uh, than core MySQL. All right, uh, great. Um, yeah, we still got more questions. I hope we can keep up with all of them. Uh, so, uh, Eduardo asked, uh, are there ways to tie this to our development process, like using WP Playground within the, that process? Uh, he, he listed an example for, uh, for example, creating demos for pull requests. Uh, Absolutely. So I'm going to share my screen for just a second. Uh, if I can very quickly find an example of a pull request previewer. Oh, I think. I'll be able to, but on a very high level. All right, I'm not going to be able to find it now, too bad. So it's somewhere in the documentation, like a more fleshed out example, but uh, very quickly to answer that. Yes, you can do that. So the Blueprints API that I showed earlier, it allows you to uh, install any WordPress uh, plugin or theme, and you can use any URL to do that. So the trick to previewing pull request is that if you have a GitHub repo and you have a WordPress plug plugin or theme there, well, you probably have some unique tests for that, hopefully. And if you have them, then you may have a continuous integration like CI pipeline there. So it will build your plugin, run the tests and show a green check mark, this PR is good. So I built a Gutenberg plugin previewer for, uh, with WordPress Playground, and here's how it works. There is a blueprint, it installs a Gutenberg plugin from a special URL. And that URL is my custom endpoint that downloads the build file from GitHub CI, right? So we run tests, we build the plugin, and then this plugin is exposed through an endpoint. And this endpoint is used by a blueprint. And all the blueprint says is, well, install a plugin, here's a URL, that's it. Playground downloads that, it, that URL happens to have the version of a plugin from this specific pull request, and it just works. Right. Uh, and again, yeah. like there's more about that in the in the docs if that was too, too fast to quickly. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, we have uh, at least three more questions and we just got just a few minutes left, um, but let's try to get, the, uh, get through these. Um, from Victor, uh, can a playground instance be run on uh, something like Stack Blitz? Stack Blitz. Yes. yes, it can, in a couple of different ways, actually. So, on Stack Blitz, one thing you can do is you can use the iframe, and you can embed playground from uh, playground.wordpress.net. Well, that's not technically running it on Stack Blitz, right? We're just sourcing it from somewhere else. So, what else you can do is you can run the actual WebAssembly uh, version of Playground, the full thing, inside StackWid. So to do that, you would have to import an NPM package and uh, call this uh, function like PHP, uh, node PHP dot, uh, I think it's start or, 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 or load one of these. And it's, all right, that, that's too much in two weeks. The point is you can run the node version of Playground on StackWid using their Node.js and, I expected that to be very slow, but it is actually decently usable. Uh, I had some technical problems with running it on stack bleeds that are related to stack bleeds, as in sometimes the UI froze. That wasn't a playground like processing thing, like I could move around in DevTools and like that's very detailed, but I had some small uh, troubles, but playground actually worked there. So you're welcome to play with it. and. One of the links in the resources section is a free in-browser development environments. 
your, uh, I encourage you to check it out. There's a video and some demos of what we build with Stankbleed during the CloudFest hackathon. One of these things is exactly playground running in there as a development environment for WordPress. All right, great. All right, uh, over to Roy's question. Let me see. Uh, he asked that you please address uh, computer memory requirements for the four different ways to use playground. Oh, sure. They're almost exactly the same in that you always need to load playground. The only difference is that in one way you click things and in the other two, uh, all right, so there's no code thing where you just use it. And there are three different APIs. So all APIs actually do the same things as you would do by clicking manually, right? You can just automate that, uh, pre-configure it, make it much, much, much more convenient. So it only runs a snippet of a JavaScript code internally. If you use uh, the NPM package for JavaScript API, uh, so the, the last API that I showed, well, it will require you to run some kind of build pipeline, right? Like NPM run build or Webpack or ES build or what have you. So this will surely impose some additional memory requirements, but that's not specific to Playground itself. That's just the development process. And how much memory does it require also to answer that? Uh, depends how you measure it. Uh, I did some uh, benchmarking and one instance of work with Playground, I think took about like 250 megabytes. So I don't quote me on that, but that's vaguely what I recollect. All right, uh, great. Uh, all right, let's get you over to David's question. Uh, that asks, uh, would it be possible to use the browser uh, database, uh, index database, to persist the WordPress content between a page refresh or example? Yeah, it would. I don't recommend that, though. Uh, I'm going to post the link to the issue that I just happen to have handy where uh, there are explorations for persisting file system changes. So IndexedDB works, but is super, super slow. That's the problem with it. There are ways to handle that with a local storage or even better origin private file system. Uh, I would really like to get there, but for now, this is the uh, this is an exploratory uh, feature that that will come together. Index DB not recommended. All right. So we have one last question, and I think we all know the answer to this. I am right in thinking the issues and enhancements. Uh, en enhancement suggestions can be uh, made through GitHub and PRs uh, from contributors. Are those welcome? And I think uh, everybody's welcome to contribute, right? Oh yeah, like everyone is super welcome and I will totally appreciate it. And I'm super happy to brainstorm anything, chat, explain things like even meet for a Slack chat or, or, or a Zoom call even. Like I really want you to contribute. So that, that question makes me very happy. And if there's anything I can do to, to help you succeed in Playground, let me know. Uh, there's a good first issue label in the repo. I'm not sure if there are any issues right now with that label. So I, I could probably do a little bit better on triage, but anything that you find either confusing or uh, a feature that you would like to see, but isn't there, like even if it's a you no know, bug report or a documentation change or like, code change or a code change that you would like to make, but you don't know how, everything is super welcome and I'm there to help you. All right, that's great. Uh, I did leave the uh, link to uh, the GitHub repo in the chat uh, for anybody who wants to, uh, you know, check it out, get involved. But for, but for now, I'm going to, uh, we're gonna end this session. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, and I also want to thank Adam uh, for joining us and the whole presentation and answering everyone's questions. Um, if, oh, I want uh, to thank you so oh. much for having me and for, for coming here in a, such a great number. It's a very heartwarming to, to be here with you. So thank you. Um, if you want to see Adam again, he will be doing the same presentation uh, at tomorrow in a, meet, uh, in a separate developer hours meetup. I'm linking in the uh, chat. Realistically, I would like for you to share that with your friends who are in uh, like uh, Europe or the Asia Pacific regions. Um, it will be at an earlier 
time zone. Um, so we're trying to get most of the world uh, covered. So please, you know, share that link on your socials and, you know, uh, and let your friends know who may be on the other side of the world. And, but for now, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, thanks, Adam, for doing this. Uh, Y'all have a good day.